you see almost like a stronger sensibility with younger Cubans than you did before? Yes. You know, there's a word for it. It's called retro acculturation. Whoa. It's a real word. Tell me about this word. Retro acculturation. I like it. That is this younger generation reaching back, and we want that. Those are our roots, and we want to represent that, but and we want to express it in our own way. Mm. Does that make sense to you? I'm sure it that does, I'm sure that resonates with you. Yeah, yeah. So this is my kids. If you met my kids, my, my oldest daughter, who was born in California. Uh, my ex-husband, her father, is German, oh. and she's more Cuban than anybody sitting here at this table. I like that. He'll tell you. Yeah, she's she's got her, her Cubanity is intact. Same with my other kids. They love, that's the first thing they'll say, well, I'm Cuban, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So it's the retro acculturation. They love, they love having the Cuban roots. So I, lo- I love what's happening now, like you said, in the last 20 years. This is new. Yeah. This is, I was just at Martha's of Miami, and, yeah. you know, it's like she just, lightning, she it, lightning, she lightning has business, struck, right? Yeah. right? Out of the Miami. And well, the same with what of... you're doing here with Chugs, too, and here. Yeah. Uh, this is, it's time for you now. It's you part know? of not being, it's like don't run away from who you are. For us, 30s, yeah. you know, 40s. 20s what like where are we from who yeah. are we what are we about what are we about like there's so there's already so many things to be confused about in today's world yeah don't be confused about your culture you know your language your music your all that stuff and a lot of that when i talk to younger cuban cuban americans we're proud to be american but we mm-hmm. are super proud to be cuban as well so it's like and we're, I, I, the one thing I feel about this generation is apart from the last like 15 years or whatever, is that we, we're want, we want to be heard. We're going to be heard. Yeah, yeah. Whether people like it or not. Because there's so much like misinformation that today's term is fake news. Yes. There's so <laughs> yeah. much like fake news yeah, yeah. about Cuba and like how great things are. So it's oh like. Oh my gosh. Crazy making. Yeah, That's it's, crazy it's, making. It's, it's intense. So it's like we're, we're smarter than that. Mm-hmm. We're, we're not going to just fall into this machine of like just uh i don't know it just feels like they want to fit us into a machine and we're going to go with that it's not going to happen do you think that's a thing that's that's miami or do you think well, that's I don't know. generational I mean, this is this is our sample size um you know like i don't i don't know many cubans outside of miami the ones that i do left here yeah to go elsewhere and just recently so mm-hmm. they do feel the same way that like i do and a lot of the people that i hang out with do um I don't know. I think it's a generational thing that people want to, they want to be heard and they don't want to fall into this like machine aspect of like, everything's fine. Everything's going to be fine. Oh no. Yeah. I get Look you. at the TV, bright lights. It's fine. It's not fine. Yeah. Right. It's not fine. Yeah. We're not going to say it's fine. So, and it's also, I think for us in Miami, we're so close in proximity to yeah. the island right. too that I, I think a lot of people our age almost feel helpless that we can't do more. And we want to do more. Right. And it's like, how how far are we willing to take this? And and how far can you? Right. To, yeah. What kind of an impact can you make? All right. So I'm going to use a term that uh, the influencer thing. So this is, <sighs> oh, I know, I hate oh, it. I hate oh, it. All right. I know. I said it. Nerves. I know. You I said it out loud, <sighs> too. Oh, I'm so great. sorry. To, but you know what? We should describe totally. to it's our real. the reaction. Here I am. Like, yeah, but you're you're that's different. That I think I think that's completely different. <laughs> but I don't call myself an influencer. I know. But just you're, recently it's we like, oh, call you trailblazers. I, yeah. yeah, trailblazers. Yes. I like that so much better. Yeah, me too. Like, you know, this is I started heading in this direction. I was like, come on. This is who we are and our culture is beautiful and it's fraught with peril and May I? Right? I if I may. You may. Okay. The like <laughs> you have had an incredible amount of influence, just like he has had an Thank incredible you. amount of influence. And I'm word. pointing at yeah. Burger Beast, not Nick or Carluba. Mm-hmm. But um, the difference is, is that the place that those influences come from within you is a place of, like, it's a place of good. 
It's not like you just want to no, no, influence someone for something in return. It's because you want to tell a story. Yes, that's exactly You have right. a feeling about something. Your feeling is very strong about your family, your culture, mm-hmm. your food. This is my food. passion. Yeah, and that's cool. Like, So creating influence is great, but I think your impact is much bigger than just being calling anyone. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Your head exploded just a little bit when there. I said that word. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gathered right now. I just ordered us dessert. So. Did you? Yeah. I love you for that. Yeah, I mean, this you're gonna get like a new a new version of Cuban desserts. And what does that mean to us? Yeah. What's an old version of Cuban desserts? So that I can see traditional. I mean, okay. traditional. I mean, like the flan that I grew up with. Yeah. Right. Which is amazing still. Yeah. Still. You know what's crazy? And something to what you mentioned earlier, like how they could just cook it in like a charcoal yeah. oven. Yeah. My grandfather, his oven hasn't been calibrated in a million years. <laughs> right. This guy. He just knows. And I don't like. He, he just knows. You couldn't find a measuring cup, teaspoon. You couldn't find right. a pot that actually fits shit in it. Like, And it's crazy. Like he, you know, for my birthday every year, he makes rao encendido and camarón enchilado. Oh. That's every year. Oh. Oh, right, those yeah. are my two favorite things in the world. Right, and then when I see him making the oxtail, it's just as someone that was trained in French cuisine, it's yeah. all wrong. Everything, about everything, it is wrong. yeah, everything about it is wrong. It's out of the pot. It's boiling. There's stuff flying <laughs> everywhere, and I'm just like, "Hey, lower that!" Yeah. Hey. No, just, no, no I want that. Salt, I'm just like, nine year old guys about yeah. to hit you with yeah. a fucking like right. can of galletas. Just so <laughs> get out of the way. But, I've forgotten more oxtail than you've seen. That's right? true. That's 100 percent accurate. And, and you know what? When it hits the table, it's fucking amazing. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. amazing. And the flan too, like measuring cup. Get yeah, out of here right. with that. And they it's make it like, in a bah. coffee can. I wrote about that. It's like, you know, make it in a coffee can. Yeah, yeah. There's a what? restaurant here now that does that called Salau. See? A Cuban, Cuban dude the, like he's That's retro acculturation. They're doing it like somebody's grandmother he's made. He's a good he's a really good guy. Yeah. His food is very like it's you know, deep rooted Cuban, but like super Apunta. fancy. It's called <laughs> Salau. <laughs> Salao. Salao. Así mismo. Yeah. Salao. S A L A apostrophe O. Yeah. Yeah, like you do. And it's um where was I going with this? Anyways, the fl- the flan like the fact that it's still perfect. He doesn't time it. He doesn't know what the temperature is. And it doesn't matter. It's okay, always so perfect. So cocina I, de oído. Yes. So this uh um, love that. If I wake up in the morning, because I wake up very early, and it's yeah. cold outside, yeah. I automatically send an email to my entire, to everyone that works for me, is like, yeah. we're serving hot chocolate and churro today. Oh, right? okay. Did so you do that on Wednesday? I did. Okay. I did. I did it on Wednesday and yeah. Thursday. That was the first thing we did when I landed I Wednesday I still have the night. chocolate in my office. It's the only chocolate that he'll, chocolate he'll ever use. Yeah? Yeah, it's the, um, the yellow bar, the French the, yeah, one. The, the, yeah, is it French or is it the Spanish one? It's the French one. Yeah, okay. I don't. I couldn't tell you the name of it. I'll show. I'll bring it up. Um, and then you you grate it. Grate and, it. Yeah. And the whole nine and the yeah. whole thing. And cornstarch. You do. Yeah. No. You don't over cornstarch. No, it. we don't cornstarch. Okay. We don't. We don't. Do so that it doesn't. You know. His, it could I mean, be the his, foundation of a house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> his, I like it kind of thick. When yeah. people ask me what's in that hot chocolate, I'm always scared to tell them. Yeah. Oh man, because it's like a, like a million calories per yeah. three ounces. It's like a sugar, it's like a sugar bomb. Right? It's like well, so it's condensed milk, evaporated milk, uh, milk, chocolate, Every yeah. butter. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just it's wild. as God intended. Milk. Yeah. Milk. <laughs> and then we make churros, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, let me clear this out of the way. More food coming. Hey, Karen. <gasps> oh my gosh. You brought spoons. That's beautiful. What do you got here?